a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Minnesota. It's back to the West Coast for the Minnesota Twins. This time a shorter road trip, just three games in Anaheim against the Los Angeles Angels. The Twins, one of the few highlights of their season so far, a three-game series sweep over the Angels at Target Field in mid-April. All the games were close. The final game, a walk-off win for the Minnesota Twins. It'll be Southern California native Ricky Nolasco making the start for the Twins in the opener against the Angels. For whatever reason, he's pitched much better away from Target Field than at Target Field. Mike Trout's in the lineup tonight for the Angels. They got hit on the right thumb by a pitch yesterday. He's their designated hitter, and he still might be the best player in the game. And as you might expect, a beautiful night for baseball here in Southern California. Dick Bramer along with Burt Blylevin for the series opener. A thrilling win for the Twins yesterday against the Boston Red Sox. And maybe a bigger moment for Max Kepler as he hopes to stick in the big leagues. Yeah, Mac, Max Kepler, only 23 years old. He started down in Rochester, got called up for a little bit, and then went back down. Didn't spend a lot of time in AAA because last year he was in single A and double A. But Kepler really starting to come out and prove that maybe he belongs in the big leagues. Yesterday was a highlight. I mean, in the 10th inning with two strikes on him, straightaway center, first major league home run, and the Twins finally beat the Boston Red Sox 7-4. to four. Well, for the young players and the veterans alike, they'll get a look at Jared Weaver tonight, the Angels starter. Now, the Angels have had all sorts of difficulty keeping their starting pitchers healthy, and that's one thing you can say about Weaver. At least he's been healthy. Yeah, he's been healthy. Now, this is not the Jared Weaver when he first came up in 2006 for the Angels. This is a guy that's kind of transformed into almost a junk ball type pitcher. He's going to get maybe clocked at maybe 85, 86 miles an hour, but for some reason, he has loved pitching against the Twins. Nine and two in his career, and seven and zero oh in eight starts here at Angel Stadium. Well, the Twins hope to have continued success against the Angels, and they hope that it'll be a happy homecoming for a couple of Southern California natives. Third baseman Trevor Plouffe and the starting pitcher Ricky Nolasco back on home turf for the series opener against the Angels.
of success and failure this season. But bumps in the road are to be expected with young talent finding its way in the major leagues. Yesterday another fresh face took his first step forward in the big leagues when Max Kepler helped Minnesota do a walk off win. Tonight the Twins young stars try to outshine the Angels superstars in a three game series from Anaheim. And both teams have had some issues. The Twins have turned the page and brought up a lot of young players over the last year and a half or so. Kepler with the biggest moment of his very young major league career yesterday. His first major league home run a walk off home run. Max has the home run from uh, his uh, the home run ball that he uh, mm -hmm. hit yesterday as a keepsake. Yeah, Twins would like to do against the Angels here what they did against the Angels back in April sweep the series so one game at a time but hopefully it starts here tonight. One starting lineup at a time brought to you by Menards Eduardo Nunez leading things off and then Robbie Grossman Joe Maurer Trevor Plouffe Brian Dozier Young Hopart Max Kepler Kurt Suzuki and Byron Buxton. And on the mound it'll be 33 year old Jarrett Weaver making his 13th start his second against the Twins he pitched and started in game on April 16th in Minnesota against his mound opponent tonight Ricky Nolasco he got a no decision in the twin six to four win. Weaver struggled with his control that day four and a third innings he gave up eight hits four runs and he gave up one home run and that's to Trevor Plouffe. The Northland Ford defense for the Angels Todd Cunningham in left. Former twin Shane Robinson in center Cole Calhoun in right we mentioned Mike Trout's the designated hitter. You know Escobar Gregorio Petit at short Johnny Giavatella at second who holes at first and Carlos Perez behind the plate and in tonight's game we are participating in the home run challenge every home run in this game raises four thousand four hundred dollars for prostate cancer research and you can make a pledge by going online to homerunchallenge.org. Twins organization is also getting involved in the home run challenge. They'll be donating an additional $10,000 for each home run hit by the Twins this week and $1,000 for every strikeout by a Twins pitcher. The Twins did sweep the Angels in Minnesota in mid-April. Three wins by a total of four runs. And again, the final Twins win was one uh, was a, a walk off win Oswaldo Arcia with a game winning uh, single Nunez Grossman and Maurer to get things started against Jared Weaver. All right, you see the numbers on Nunez currently fifth in the American League with that 327 batting average. And Nunez takes Anthony's a strike and that's about as high uh, a reading as you'll get on the radar gun about 84 miles per hour for Jared Weaver. Yeah Weaver in his 11th season with the Angels. Foul almost, away. You know, almost when you face a guy that throws 84 to 85 in that range it's almost like facing a knuckleballer like they did with Wright. You have to really tell yourself to stay back because yeah that's his fastball but he'll throw that slow curveball. He'll throw the good changeup. Foul back. Another fastball. And fastball at 85 miles an hour. Weaver's been around since 2006, a three time All Star. Of course, we highlighted the no hitter he pitched against the Twins in 2012 here. Our ground ball, base hit, an off speed pitch, and Nunez, around first, will hold up with a single. Yeah, Weaver has given up a lot of hits this year to innings pitched 89 hits now in 69 and two thirds innings breaking ball looked like it left up and Nunez starts the offense for the twins with a base hit. Robbie Grossman wasn't even in the twins organization when the twins swept the Angels in April. He and today's center fielder for the Angels Shane Robinson both spent some time together in the Indians organization earlier this year. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Twins, of course, have tried to do a little more base stealing this year. Nunez is a top candidate to do that. 
Yeah, 14 stolen bases for Nunez in 18 attempts. And the team 41 for 55 in the stolen base department. And clubs have run against Weaver this year. Eight stolen bases in 11 attempts. They've been successful. He's got a couple pickoffs this year. There goes Nunez, and the pitch is up. And Nunez is in with a stolen base. A high throw, and Nunez with a head first slide gets in under the tag. Well, in yesterday's ball game, four stolen bases, a season high for the Twins. Nunez with a couple. Bunkton Brian Dozier. Yep. Brian Dozier also with the stolen base. There's Brian. And Nunez again with the steal. He's in scoring position with nobody out. 1 1 the count to Grossman. 71 miles per hour and Grossman just couldn't wait long enough. Well, Nunez getting a very good jump. Weaver with that leg kick and diving in head first gets that hand on the bag before Petit could apply the tag. And Grossman's job right here like he did yesterday just kind of get Nunez over to third base if he can. Hit a ground ball to short that Nunez got a great jump and got over to third and then later Joe Maurer drove him in on a ground ball out. So the little things they're going to try to do here like they did yesterday. Pitch up and it's two and two. We were 33 years old now. Angels number one pick back in 2004. And lifted foul over the screen. Weaver won his 2016 debut. In fact, he won his first three decisions. And has won just twice since April 26th. Call third strike. He floated that 71 mile per hour pitch over the outside corner, one down. That's why I said it's almost like a knuckleball. You kind of give up on it, and all of a sudden that ball breaks back over the plate. Weaver picking up his 43rd strikeout, now in 70 innings pitched. And he's a guy that, you know, can average about seven strikeouts per nine innings. Now, he's not the pitcher he once was, but always had excellent control, about 2.4 walks per nine innings. Here's Maurer. And Nunez started dancing toward third, and Weaver is being called for a balk. So Nunez may have distracted Weaver because he took a couple of steps, at least a step and a half toward third, and Weaver aborted his delivery and spun around with an inside move but a balk was called by D.J. Rayburn. Yeah not too many times you'll see a balk with a runner at second base. Watch Weaver right here. It looked like he stepped off but. Outside ball one to Maurer. I don't quite understand the uh, balk because it looked like he of course his foot was in the pit in front of the pitching rubber. He stepped it looked like behind the rubber. That's not a box. And a strike now to Maurer, one and one. Watch his right leg, uh, whether his right knee bent first. Yeah, well, yeah. okay. A little bit yeah, of a little, little movement. Can't have pitchers out there deceiving runners. <laughs> Maurer, nine hits and 34 at bats against Weaver. Got a chance to put the uh, Twins on the board here. Two and one infield back. And a base hit to right. Nunez will score. And the Twins are on the board. Maurer driving in his 24th run of the year. It's kind of deja vu from yesterday's ball game. A couple ground ball outs created or out, out but or a run. But here, Joe Maurer driving in his 24th run on a base hit between first and second. So Nunez scores the first runner of the ball game. And the uh, value of a stolen base. You know, I mean, Nunez had ended up at third base before the single, but got to steal second, get into scoring position. And now here's Trevor Plouffe. And strike.
five one. Well, Trevor Plouffe has four home runs one of them coming against Weaver that on April 16th a solo home run. In the four and a third innings Weaver worked in that ball game. He's seven for 17 with the home run and eight runs batted in against Weaver. Way out in front of that 71 mile per hour curveball again. Weaver's best season in 2012 when he went 20 and 5 with a 2.81 ERA. A couple of years ago he won 18 ball games. Last year frustrating for him. Only seven wins in 26 starts. And on three pitches, blue strikes out, two away. Bring up Brian Dozier. Mm -hmm. Been one injury after another. CJ Wilson, Garrett Richards, Tyler Skaggs. And uh, we're not talking 15 day disabling injuries here. Look at them. They're all on the 60 day DL. Pretty serious uh, things uh, to deal with. And each team has used nine different starting pitchers this year. The Angels will use a tenth this weekend when they use Tim Lincecum. Ball one. Lincecum with a handful of minor league starts and he will start this weekend for the Angels. Dozier the batter one and oh. Well still you know we can talk about their lack of starting pitching but I think we have to look at ours over the Angels. Angels starters have at least won 16 ball games. Twins have only won eight. Two and oh now to Dozier. Game with four fastballs, 84, 85, 85, 85. I don't know that we've seen a <laughs> fastball since. Well, he's adjusting well to what he has. <laughs> There's a fastball that snuck yeah. by Dozier. And now it's two and two. Now, in this situation, you see where the second baseman's playing pretty much right up the middle, so a lot of room. Basically, the right side of the infield is open. And this is a guy you have to wait back on and hopefully hit it up the middle or to right field. Bauer goes and the pitch tapped to short. Petit has it. And he'll throw it across for the final out. Twins get a couple of singles, a stolen base, a balk help, and they've got the first run of the game. He gotten a hit. He stole on the base. He scored a run. He's uh, been a wonderful godsend for the Twins as the lineup has struggled. But Dunya is having perhaps his career year. The Menard batting order for the Angels. Janelle Escobar leading off. Cole Calhoun batting second. And Mike Trout, Albert Pujols, Johnny Giavatella, Todd Cunningham, Gregorio Petit, Carlos Perez, and then Shane Robinson. 
And Ricky Nolasco, born right here in Southern California, getting an opportunity to pitch in front of his family and friends. Hopefully it'll be a good outing for Nolasco's 13th start. As I mentioned, it was Weaver's mound opponent back on April 16th. He, like Weaver, got a no decision in that twin 6-4 win. And a first pitch fastball. And that's important for Nolasco to establish that fastball early and then mix in the breaking ball. Escobar having a good year. Ninth in the American League in hitting at 309. He turned it on since, me, the middle of, since the middle of May. He's been one of the hotter infielders in the league. Two strikes. Hey, Escobar in his first season last year with the Washington Nationals when he hit 314 in 139 ball games. That's to center. Buxton. Over about 15 steps to make the catch one away. Take a look at the Twins defense. And Grossman certainly has been steady in left field. The defense, of course, brought to you by Northland Ford. Buxton can cover as much ground as anybody. Kepler's done pretty well in right field, too. It's pretty good defensive alignment in the outfield. Pluth, Nunez, Dozier, Maurer, the infielders, and Suzuki behind the plate. You know, with the dampness in the air here in Southern California, this is a ballpark that is kind of a pitcher-friendly type ballpark. 347 down a left field line and 396. You think, boy, that, that's, you know, not that far straightaway center. It's, what, 411, 415 at the dome, or excuse me, uh, target field. But with the dampness here, kind of like Oakland at night, yeah. sometimes you can crush the ball, but it just doesn't leave the ballpark. I think up in Seattle, they have the same phenomenon. It's called the marine layer. At least that's the term that's been used recently to explain why the ball doesn't travel as far in the evening as the daytime. We have three night games here. So three presumably low-scoring games. And that's been the theme when the Twins have come out here. The games have been fairly low-scoring. And... Uh, all the more reason why it's important to get that first run of the game. One and one to Calhoun. Uh, one and two. And Alaska, not a lot of starts against the Angels. This is his second start this season, his only fourth career start, looking for his first win. One and two to the Angel right fielder. On the outside corner, he dropped a breaking ball over for out number yeah, two. Yeah, big curveball right there. 64th strikeout for Nolasco in 72 innings pitch. That's why he established the fastball, and then the tight curveball picks up the strikeout. Two down, and that'll bring up Trout. Some anxious moments yesterday. Trout hit on the right thumb by a pitch, and he said immediately he was very concerned because his thumb went numb. They did x-rays, no break. Of course, he's a right-handed thrower, so that might explain why he's the designated hitter and not the center fielder, but they were on their edges of their seats yesterday after this. Yeah, thank goodness he's okay. And now one and one. Trout just 24 years old. He won't be 25 until August. This is already his sixth season with the Angels. Just away, two and one. American League MVP a couple years ago. Four time All Star. And Trout swings and misses two and two. Time All Star, two time All Star MVP. I mean, the guy, even at the biggest stage against the best talent in the game, emerges and separates himself. He's got two new vehicles to show for it. <laughs> the MVP gets his choice of a, I believe it's a Chevy. Two and two to Trout. Hoping to keep Pujols on deck. The Twins are. There's a hard ground ball. And with Dozier shifted over, he still couldn't cover enough ground. And Trout's aboard with a two out single. Well, even that ball right there, the velocity that the ball comes off his bat is, uh, is something special to watch. 
Mike Trout over his career where he ranks. Home runs Great stolen bases and if you're in. What do you call those things charts. I love, I love charts. Yes. yes. If, yeah. if you're on the same chart with Willie, Willie Mays, Mays. you're a pretty good company. Yeah. Here is Pujols not having the year that. He will probably end up having the numbers a little uh, soft early in the season not in the power department he's got 12 home runs but hitting just 232. Down and away ball one. Well, he's got very very good numbers against Ricky in Alaska 13 hits and 28 at bats a 464 batting average with three home runs. Of course these guys faced each other when Pujols was with the Cardinals in Alaska with the Marlins and the Dodgers. One and one. The first inning. Twins have a one nothing lead. Only getting an opportunity to uh, play where uh, you know he can play in front of his family and his mother right there. My circle machine is not working right now, but she is here by circle. There you go. 90 years old and the Bernanski family here to uh, celebrate that 90th birthday. So happy birthday. Yeah, it's pretty special night. Young Ho Park and he takes strike one. You know, Tom originally signed with the Angels before he was right. traded over to the Twins. Tom D Bernanski. Doug Corbett coming to the Angels, reliever for the Twins. Off the plate, one and one. Park Kepler and Suzuki here in the Twins' second inning. Yeah, it's a big series for Park. He has really been struggling at the plate. He has struck out a lot. He needs to find that swing. Well, if. Weaver gets him out. It won't be because of unexpected uh, velocity. And now one and two. And he struck him out. A couple of 71 mile per hour breaking balls. Strikeout number three for Jarrett Weaver. So big slow curveball. What makes that is his long arms and the way that that whip that he generates. And the tight rotation of that pitch. Here's Kepler. Weaver listed at six foot seven, about 210 pounds. And 
There's a breaking ball low ball one remember many years ago we showed Weaver slow motion what his arm went through and it almost looked like it came out of socket in his elbow. And he really hasn't had that much of a arm issue over his career. Now last year he had some hip issues that uh, put him on a disable list for a little bit. His left hip. And now two and one to Kepler. Three and one with Suzuki on deck. Well, twin hitters have said for years, other hitters have uh, talked about it, that because of Weaver's delivery and he steps across his body, the ball, baseball, comes out of his hand, out of those rocks that are out in left center field. I mean, it's that extreme, and the, especially for left handed batters that are looking at it like Kepler. Three and two. And another slow breaking ball, another strikeout, two down. And strikeout number four. I mean, he almost steps toward the on deck circle for the Angels. If you look real close where he steps, right there across his body, he still has that right leg come over the left leg. So. It's not like he recoils and you can see where he lands and then where Ricky Nolasco lands quite a difference of maybe almost a couple feet. And Suzuki takes high ball one. I guess if you step that far and throw across your body you never have to worry about the opposing pitcher creating a hole that you, <laughs> that land you don't in like. the same spot. <laughs> You know, and what he does, he works off the third base side of the pitching rubber, too. So the angle is almost like the ball's coming from right around shortstop or well, between short and second base. And right behind where the shortstop stands are those rocks out there. That's where the ball comes out of. And pasted to left field, Suzuki with a sharp single. His uh, first hit of the ball game, obviously, but the team's third. That'll bring up Byron Buxton. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. You can watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Here's Buxton. Weaver getting some dirt out of those spikes. I've pitched on that mound. It becomes very clay, clayy like. Very. Is that even a word? Muddy. Clay. I, mean, Why, I make them up as I go. Don't worry about that. Somebody will let me know that's not a word. <laughs> How would you spell it? C L A Y Y. Y Y. Two Y's. Yeah. Clayy. Maybe with an I E. Then the I becomes the Y becomes an I. So it just. Yeah, C L A I E, Clay. One, <laughs> one strike to Buxton. <laughs> Swearing to bunt and taking strike two. Now, is the elementary school where you attended in this area, is it still standing? No, heavens <laughs> no. What, I had seven good years in elementary school. Okay. <laughs> two strikes to Buxton with Suzuki at first. That sixth grade was tough. Oh, pretty good pitch right there. Yeah. Where was that? Mike Everett yeah. said it was not a strike. Mike Everett, a veteran of 18 major league seasons. He's the crew chief here with the four umpires. See where number three was. And a liner caught by Petit. And the inning ends. A single for the Twins. Suzuki left the board. Still one nothing.
Johnny Giavatello will lead off for the Angels in the second. And then Todd Cunningham and Gregorio Petit. When the Twins beat the Angels as that series started at Target Field, the Angels thought they were on a bit of a roll. They had won four games in a row. And, and we said the Twins swept the Angels, but the three games decided by a total of four runs. One strike to Giavatella. Giavatella in his second season with the Angels came over from the Kansas City Royals. Finally got a chance to play last year and made the most out of it. He ended up hitting 272 last year for the Angels in 129 ball games. More of a line drive type hitter, not much power. The Dean of Managers, Mike Sosha, in his 17th year. Owen two. Line drive base hit to center on an 0-2 yeah, pitch. Too good a pitch right there, 0-2. You want to bury him down and away with that fastball. Instead, Nolasco left it up. Second hit for the Angels. Todd Cunningham will have a chance with a man aboard. Oh, watch Suzuki where he wants it down and away, and that ball stayed up. And Giovatella hitting it right back up the middle. Cunningham 0 for 8 on the season Talked with Mike Sosha before the game today he said hey we're just trying to circle the wagons here until we get some people healthy again fouled away a strike now Cunningham like you mentioned 0 for 8 he has experience with the Braves in 2013 and 15 started the season down in Triple A just got called up a couple days ago was hitting well down in Salt Lake, the AAA affiliate for the Angels. He's hitting 299 in 55 ball games. A switch hitter. Outside one and one. Daniel Nava put on the disabled list in the middle of May. Simmons on the disabled list with a thumb injury. That's why Petit's playing it short and hitting behind Cunningham. Yeah, the running game for the Angels, too, aren't, isn't the running game they once had three or four years ago. A lot of the, the speedsters are gone. Angels have 21 stolen bases, but they've been caught 15 times. Off the plate. Two and one. Alasco has only one double play turned behind him, and that was in his last start against the Miami Marlins. His former team. And with the runner going and Cunningham swinging away, a hit and run, and a pitch tap foul back to the backstop. here tonight making his 260th major league start he has 102 wins 93 losses 10 complete games for those shutouts tap to the right side Maurer will get the lead runner and no return throw nice play by Joe Maurer making sure that he goes almost toward the pitcher's mound to make a good throw to Nunez doesn't stop and maybe run into the runner going to second. So he creates himself a very good angle. Watch Joe right here feel the ball and then step and make a good throw to Nunez for the first down. That'll bring up Petit with one out and one on. Out in front, strike one. Nolasco has just two wins, but in his starts, the Twins have five wins. The Twins are five and seven when he starts, but 
Only four of the 12 starts have been quality starts, meaning six innings, three earned runs or less. A couple starts ago against Tampa, he had one of those quality starts. He pitched a whale of a ball game. Off the plate foul. Ended up getting a loss. Now his April numbers were pretty good. Twins would take that six months out of the year. He uh, was 1 0, had an ERA of 3.25. 27 and two thirds innings. He got an out in the eighth inning in one of his starts. That's a rarity these days. Against the Indians. And then the May numbers were more than double that in terms of hits and runs allowed. And he's been so so in June. Line foul. Two strikes. Petit in his first season with the Angels. Signed a minor league contract, started the season down in Salt Lake City, Triple A, got called up in the middle of May. He spent time with the Oakland A's from Venezuela, Houston Astros, and then last year with the Yankees. Petit's always been kind of a utility type player. Down and in. One and two. Kind of touched it on the open too, Dick, about the Alaska road and home games. How he has really struggled at Target Field. 0 and 2 with a 6.5 ERA. And here on the road, both of them six starts. This is seventh start on the road. Two and two with a 3.82 earned run average. That's hard to explain to me. Target field to me is, at the very least, a very fair ballpark for a fly ball yeah. pitcher. You know what? Tomorrow night starter Irvin Santana, same thing. Runner going, and it'll be a base hit. Runners now first and third with Petit grounding one between Nunez and Blue. Yeah, good uh, base running by Cunningham. That's what the Angels used to do with all their speed, the Ibars and the Asturuses and guys like that. Howie Kendrick, they used to take first to third in a heartbeat. And Cunningham right there getting a good jump. He may be going with the pitch. He scoots over to third base. And a good play by Grossman throwing the ball in the second. Keep the double play in order. Perez the batter. Perez a sub 200 hitter. Way out in front strike one. Perez on the season 139 at bats. Only grounded into four double plays. Alaska trying to pitch around a pair of singles here in the second inning. Another breaking ball off the plate. What we've seen from Alaska establishing the fastball, and then mm -hmm. the, from what I've been able to gather from what you and Jack Morris have said, it's almost like he gets away from the fastball right. in the middle innings. Sometimes he gets into situations like this and he doesn't trust his fastball. Try to, and he's got some good movement on his fastball. He'll all of a sudden throw a lot of breaking balls. I think we're seeing that here in the right. second inning already. Right. He has a good curveball, but kind of like Tyler Duffy, I'd like to see both these guys trust their fastballs a little bit better than they seem like they do. And Petit checked again at first. Petit has not attempted to steal a base yet. Pope foul down the right field line. The Twins have turned 55 ground ball double plays in 62 games. And they've only hit into 38. Now both numbers are partially explained to the fact the Twins haven't had enough base runners right. and they've given up too many base runners. They got four ground ball double plays in the game yesterday. 
Well, the scouting report on Perez for Nolasco must be keep the ball away. And a lot of breaking balls. There's another one. And he almost pulled the trigger. Two and two. Somewhere in an at bat, you almost have to show him that you will come in with that fastball. Sneak that fastball by him. But you have to make sure it's in. You can't miss out over the plate because Perez does have some pop in that bat. And Suzuki again sitting away. And he does go a fastball by him and gets a big strikeout. Two down, and that'll bring up Shane Robinson. So a big strikeout right there for Nolasco, his second, second of the bowl game. Limited tickets remain for Minnesota Positive Coaching Alliance Breakfast with the Champions Tuesday, June 14th at Target Field. Speakers include Vikings General Manager Rick Spielman, analyst Chris Spielman, and others. Visit FoxSportsNorth.com. Click on upcoming events for details. Shane Robinson, he settled with the Angels, getting a chance to play in a similar role he had last year with the Twins. Strike at the knees. Yeah, you mentioned that Grossman and Robinson were together in the Indian organization. Actually, Shane was released by the Indians at the end of spring training and then signed with the Angels a couple days later. He started in AAA, got called up on May 1st. And he gives the Angels something that uh, you suggested they need address a little more athleticism, speed. It's not the Angel team that has an abundance of power and speed. He had a good job for the Twins last year. 83 ball games, hit 250, stole six bases. Ground ball. Dozier can't make the play. Nunez knocks it down, and Whoa. now they got the runner between second and third. And a snowball run fight. Yeah, run them <laughs> all the way back. And that'll be the end of the inning. No, oh, no, no, no. He made contact. Ploof did not get out of the way, oh and there was contact with the runner. Petit very smartly got into that rundown, and this was not a very good rundown by the Twins. Cunningham scores, the game's tied. Right. You can see Nunez throwing it over to Ploof, and then Ploof right away throwing it to Dozier, and then right here, Ploof not getting out of the way yeah. makes contact. Petit makes contact with him, and he'll be given third base. Robinson with an RBI single to tie the game. And the inning will continue with Escobar at the plate. A mistake on the bases by the fielding team. Three singles in the inning. Escobar hit a fly ball to Buxton his first time up. Yeah, Ploof had plenty of time to run him back towards second base, and there was enough gap between he and Dozier, Petit and Dozier to make him run back towards second, but he got rid of the ball too quickly. That was a poor, poorly executed rundown. Well, Nunez gets the ball, but you can see right there, now Ploof running him down, but he's got to get out of the way. Petit turning to his right, ran in and made contact with Trevor. One strike to Escobar. And missing the inside corner, one and one. Now the ruling on that Trevor Plouffe will be charged with an error because of the interference. Getting very much alive now with runners on the corners and one run in. Off the plate with the breaking ball. The Twins bullpen of course overused in the, the most recent series the Red Sox series. So the Twins are hopeful in Alaska will pitch deep in the ball game, but all these are bullets that would have been better saved for the next inning these pitches he has to throw to get off the field in the second and now it's three and one with Calhoun on deck and you can't let your defense or that play affect you on the mound you have to try to get this guy out get your guys back on the bench. Three and one for the Angel leadoff batter. You know, we saw that a little bit in Alaska's last start in the fifth inning against the Marlins. There were some miscues in that inning. 
And the inning got away from the Twins where the Marlins put a four run four spot on the board. The Twins ended up coming back and winning that ball game. And time call just as that's, a, that's too late of a call right there. Mike Everett allowing Escobar to call a late timeout. Alaska was already in a stretch looking to throw toward home plate. And Shane Robinson was heading off toward second base. And he goes again on the pitch lifted foul three and two. And I'll bet he goes again on the next. I ball. bet he does. That's a good call. Escobar came up with the Braves back in 2007 in his 10th major league season. He's played with the Blue Jays, the Rays, the Nationals last year. Angels with four hits, Twins with three. All the hits have been singles. Three and two with Robinson going. And the pitch flared foul back into the seats. Forty two pitches for Nolasco, twenty nine strikes. Couple strikeouts, they haven't walked anybody. You'd like to average between fifteen and seventeen pitches per inning to get yourself into the sixth or seventh inning. Breaking ball away. Alasco gives up three singles in the game tying run. The arrow error does no damage other than it forces Alasco to throw about ten more pitches. By CenturyLink. Switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprismtv.com. And by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. One apiece as we go to the third inning. And Eduardo Nunez will lead things off. Singled, stole a base, went to third on a balk, scored on a Mauer single. A very active start to the game for Eduardo Nunez. If there's any justice, Nunez will represent the Twins in the All-Star game. The ball hit to center and Robinson drifting back near the track, still on the grass, makes the catch one away. And it'll bring up Robbie Grossman. I mean, imagine the complexity of Nunez's season. He doesn't play much at all in the first few weeks, and then he's asked to 
play some at third base and he does well hits well. Then now it's shortstop and he's going to do that and fill in there a different position granted he's a utility player he's used to playing pretty much anywhere in the infield. But my goodness where would Paul Molitor be without the option of having Nunez in the lineup and how many years have the twins been looking for a good leadoff batter and he's done that too. Yes he has. Grossman called out on strikes his first time up. Pitches up ball one. Two and oh. The Angels uh, with a better record than the Twins to be sure but the problem the Angels have they've got the team with the best record in the American League fronting their division the Texas Rangers. Yeah they're in fourth place right now 12 games behind the Rangers. Three and oh. Twins 16 games back looking for win number 20 on the season tonight. And a strike. We've talked about it. Grossman's ability to draw walks. Look at the West standings. The Mariners five games back. Only two teams above 500. Oh, he dropped that slow curveball on him again. We've seen it at 71. That one was 68 uh. miles per hour. He'll throw it at any time. 3 1 curveball. Will he throw a 3 2? And he missed it. Tried Lost. the fastball. First walk for Weaver. For Grossman, his 20th walk, he's only struck out 18 times. He came into the game because of the walks and a better than expected batting average. He's got an on base percentage of 457. And uh, not only has he won a spot in left field, he, to me, he looks really good in that second spot in the batting order. See what Maurer can do with Grossman at first and one away. Now Joe drove in the first run with an RBI single scoring Nunez. Picking up his 24th RBI. There's a push bunt foul. Joe has threatened to do that so many times and he's yet to put one down safely. It's almost like he wants it to lay down a perfect bunt. Where really all he has to do is just kind of bunt it just on the grass, just make sure the pitcher can't get over there. And now that does bring mm -hmm. Escobar in a little bit. And Joe, of course, he'll slap a lot of balls that way. So that cuts the range down for Escobar. Down low. It's one and one. Weaver here tonight making his 304th major league start a very good win loss record 143 wins only 86 losses on ERA in his career covering just over 1900 innings at 3.48 tap to the right side and jungled by Giavatella then thrown away Grossman will dig for third Maurer will stay at first. And Giavatella couldn't field the ball cleanly, and then in his attempt to hurry his throw, he misfired. Yeah, Petit there to cover second or second base, and Giavatello ends up throwing the ball more toward the infield than to his counterpart, the shortstop at second. So a little bobble right there, then the hurried throw. And the scoot over to third by Grossman. So let's see if the Twins can take advantage of the air. For Giavatella, that's his third air of the year. Bloof struck out his first time up. Breaking ball on the outside corner. One of the remarkable things about Loose year, and it's been a disappointing year. And he has had some injuries, but now this is his 44th game. He's only walked five times. We talked about Grossman having the very good on base percentage. There's a blast to left field, and Trevor Plouffe comes home with a three run home run. 
A home run number five on the year for Trevor Plouffe. Boy, he waited back nice on that fastball, probably about 83, 84 miles an hour. Weaver made a mistake, and Trevor Plouffe made him pay for it. That ball kind of came right back into the swing of Trevor. Jump back in front now four to one. And Dozier takes up ball one. First three run home run for Trevor Plouffe to go with a couple two runs and a couple solo. 68 miles per hour and over for a strike. After Weaver, that's the 17th home run he's allowed. Fly ball left center field. And near the edge of the track. Catch made by Robinson. Two down. We'll bring up Young Old Park. Park struck out swinging his first time up. Park 185 at bats and 67 strikeouts. And he takes fastball for a strike. Weaver struck him out. Strike two and strike three on 71 mile per hour breaking pitches. And that one 69, but up and in. Park maybe got his two most important hits in the Angel series at Target Field. What turned out to be the game winning RBI double in the eighth inning, then a home run the next day in the eighth inning that tied the game. RCA hit a home run to win it. Popped up foul and out of play. He waited back nicely on that, just got underneath that curveball. Two and two. That landed three feet in front of the plate. That's a change up right there by Weaver. Kepler on deck. Breaking ball left up and Park got a piece of it. Faced Weaver in Minnesota, went 0 for 1 with a walk, and Weaver struck him out, leading off the second inning tonight. Foul back. And all the foul balls in the long inning, 63 pitches now for Jarrett Weaver. Breaking ball off the plate. Park drops, uh, draws a walk. Second walk of the inning for the Twins against Weaver. And that'll bring up Kepler. Mentioned before, Kepler has the baseball that he hit off the batter's eye in center field for his first big league home run and a walk off home run it was in the 10th inning. Talked to him today. He said his parents watched the games on their laptop late in the evening in Berlin popped up so they were able to watch it last night and talk with Max afterwards right near the second base bag and the inning is over with Trevor Blue continues to hit Jared Weaver well he's hit four home runs against Weaver and this three run home run has the twins in front four to one.
have to know a little bit more about Trevor Plouffe. He was a Twins number one pick back in 2004. And his favorite home cooked meal, street tacos, whatever they are, they just on the street, I guess. <laughs> Most use app, Netflix. Favorite show to uh, watch? I didn't see that. What was that? Lost. Lost? Yeah. I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, Why well, watch the well, show when you've gone through life that yeah. way? Yeah. I didn't know there was a show called Lost. They must have named it after me. Called Calhoun the batter. One strike from Ricky Nolasco, given his second lead. This one of three runs. And I think the last one was what was his favorite color? I think it was purple, like my purple challenger. Oh, is that right? Yeah, We're going to bring up the color purple again. Yeah, yeah. Two strikes to Calhoun. Alaska now given that uh, three run lead. Needs a quick inning here. So quick outs. Well, he can't strike out anybody quicker than he just struck out Calhoun yeah, getting, for the second time. Yep. And strike out number three for Ricky Nolasco. So he got ahead in the count. Keeps that ball down. Calhoun swings through it. One down and here's Trout. Single to center his first time up. And up high, ball one. And a strike. in two and one you know we just had to draft and I know we talked about you know the number one pick uh, that each club gets an opportunity to get and we mentioned Mike Trout with 25th overall pick yeah. and you're thinking there's 24 other teams that have passed on him well, Alaska pretty stingy in giving up walks he's given up four hits today but no walks yet just 13 walks issued uh, you want to be careful here Threw that fastball right by him. 92 mile an hour fastball. Yeah, Trout, Angels number one pick in 2009. Yeah. Millville Senior High School in New Jersey. Fouled away. They had some pretty good uh, baseball players that ran through the Cedar Rapids Colonels organization. Mike Trout, and then a couple years later, after the affiliation chain, Byron Buxton lit the world on fire in Cedar Rapids. Both center fielders and a tapper foul. Yeah, Trout took it to a new level, though. Boy, this guy is good. And that's the problem. Buxton pretty much he didn't eclipse, but he matched Trout's records in Class A ball. And right. now here's you know, as their careers move forward Buxton will be compared to Trout and he's a different type of ball player of course yeah I mean, if you ask Byron he doesn't want to be compared to Mike Trout he wants to be compared to Byron Buxton you know as far as just going out and doing the best he can you can see Buxton drafted by the twins in 2012 number one pick and another foul ball Good battle here between Nolasco and Trout. Full count with pool holes on deck. And Buxton will have a chance to retire Mike Trout. Ball hit right at him. Two down. Good breaking ball, outer half of the plate, and Nolasco wins the battle. Who holds in a fly ball to Buxton his first time up? You know, Twins pretty lucky, really, if you're a fan. You watch the last three series. Of course, the Miami Marlins came in. You got, you know, Ishiro Suzuki. Then the Boston Red Sox came at target field. You got David Ortiz. And now you have this guy here, three future, to me, Hall of Famers. Pujols, credible numbers. And that'll reach 
the seats. One and one. I think Harmon Killebrew would have liked Albert Poole. Yes. Yeah, for sure. May have not liked number 10, but he would have liked number 12. <laughs> One and one, and Pujols pops it up. Maurer and Kepler converge, and Kepler makes a fair ball catch. And Alaska has a one, two, three, third inning, and the Twins lead four to one. Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. By Ram. Come discover great deals during the Ram Drive and Discover event. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. Well, welcome back. You see the sun starting to sit here, and I know I played here for four years. A lot of those fly balls like Kepler, watch him come in right here. Looks at Joe Maurer, but you see his reactions. It's very hard this time at night sometimes to pick up that baseball. I saw him react once he uh, once he got the ball in his glove. Kind of surprised him a little bit. <laughs> and that's not good. No. Well, he did the right thing. Put your face in front of you. You'll never get hit in the face as long as your glove is right by your nose. One strike to Suzuki, and a pop up. And Giavatella sees it all the way, one down. And it'll bring up Buxton. The Twins' flex plan gives you the flexibility to choose your games and your number of seats. You can choose in advance or even the day of the game. So don't plan flex plan. Go to twinsbaseball.com slash flex or call 800-33-TWINS to learn more. Here's Buxton fell behind early. That's been a pattern in the Buxton at bats, but then he did hit a line drive caught by Petit. His first time up. Strike one. And Buxton with a three hit game. Here's the ball hit to right center field. Trout tracking it. And he gets there up number two. Yeah, Robinson making a nice running catch. I'm sorry, Robinson, so used Robinson. to seeing Trout out there. Amen, yep. Two down, and now Nunez. West Coast version of our carsoup.com trivia question Which Angels pitcher has the most career wins against the Twins? Well, they've had some great ones. I'm thinking Mr. Finley myself, Chuck Finley. Oh, okay. Nolan Ryan, of course. Uh, that was just a segment of his career here. Right. Nunez one for two, run scored, stolen base, everything we've grown accustomed to seeing Nunez do to impact a game. Now Weaver making his 18th career start against the Twins. He has nine wins. Driven foul, one and one.
Happer toward short. Petit has it. And over to Pujols and a quick one, two, three, fourth inning for Weaver. Game West Coast series with the Angels, a 4 1 lead. And Johnny Giavatello committed a costly error when the Twins got their three runs in the third. Will lead off the fourth. Then Cunningham and Petit. And a fastball, strike one. And 10 of 14 first pitch strikes for Nolasco. So working ahead in the count. Good strike ball two. there, yeah. Ten a one nothing lead, and then the Angels got three singles, and Alasco handled some adversity behind him when Plouffe was charged for interference during a rundown. And he had to throw a bunch of extra pitches to get out of the inning, but he did not allow another run. And then the Twins got three runs on just one hit, the Plouffe home run in the third. Better pitch right there ahead in the count. Remember last time Giovatelli was up, he was ahead. Nolasco was 0 2 and they left a fastball up, and Giovatelli got a base hit up the middle. 2 and 2. We're in the center field. Nolasco, 33 years old, originally signed and drafted by the Chicago Cubs, their fourth pick back in 2001. Rialto High School in Rialto, California. And another two strike single for Giavatello. A leadoff hit in the second, now a leadoff hit here in the fourth. Yeah, breaking ball just kind of hung inside, and Giavatello picking and just kind of turning very quickly and finding that gap between third and short. And now Todd Cunningham. Cunningham hit a chopper in front of Joe Maurer, who got the force play at second. Ball one. Alaska would be the first twin starter with as many as three wins. Again, this is June 13th. I'm surprised again he's only had one double play turn behind him. Got a good sinking fastball like that right there, just misses away, falls behind.
Lasko now has pitched almost 75 innings. This is his 13th start. Just missing down and away. Now it's 3 and 0. Oh. Petit on deck. Yeah, Ricky hasn't walked anybody. He has three strikeouts. First four batters for the Angels. The names you recognize are one for eight. It's the other guys that have created problems for Nolasco, and now a strike. And they almost have to come back with the same pitch. And hoping that Cunningham can hit it at somebody. Center field. Kepler cuts it off, fires to second base, but it's a double for Cunningham. Well, he came back with the same pitch. He got the three and one, and then Cunningham jumped all over it. His first hit in an Angels uniform is a double. Came into the game 0 for 8. So 1 for 10 with a double. Pretty nice play by Kepler. You see where he's at. He took the right route. He was able to cut the ball off, keeping Giamatello from scoring. That ball got by him. Giamatello would have scored. Twins with a three run lead will play the infield back. Suzuki sets up away. And it was certainly away. Ball well, one. Yeah, he missed that by the plate. He could add another plate. That's what we've seen from Ricky from time to time. Just lose control of that hard breaking ball. Uh, There's front. a better one. So he made the adjustment. One and one. Petit singled in the second inning. Coming off a one, two, three, third inning. But now early trouble in the fourth. To right center field and Buxton to the gap makes the catch. It'll be a sacrifice fly. Everybody moves up and a 4 2 ball game. Giavatella coming in from third. Uh, productive out right there, but by Petit, he does pick up an RBI. Buxton did a good job of getting to that ball. Javatella scores the second run of the ball game, but also Cunningham tags up at second base and moves over to third. Alasco struck out Perez in the second inning. Try to get him here with a runner at third and one out. Yeah, remember he threw him a lot of breaking balls and then he zipped that fastball by him. So that's what Ricky needs right here. He needs a strikeout. And a squeeze, a safety squeeze, fouled back to the screen. The Angels, even though they're down four to two, they've run the bases well here. Taking the extra base. One strike to the catcher. And another one bunted foul. So two safety squeezes. And Perez find himself, finds himself behind in the count 0-2. And Not automatic with two strikes. He wouldn't call the safety squeeze again here. Well, Ron Renicky whispering in the ear of Cunningham what uh, might be up here. Left up, no indication of a bunt. Ron Renicky, the third base coach with Mike Sosha a lot, then he left to become the manager of the Brewers. He was let go, and now back with the Angels. Did he go? Appeal, no, two and two. 
DJ Rayburn, the first base umpire, said he did not go. On Alaska, back where he was in the second inning at bat, where he tried to get Perez to swing at a breaking ball away. And as you said, he ended up getting him with a fastball. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to stay with a breaking ball again. Slower breaking ball dribbled toward first. Mauer to Nolasco, and they get the out. And Perez succeeds in swinging away what he tried to do by bunting, and yeah, he's got the runner in from third. That breaking ball stayed up a little bit, let Perez reach out and hit that ball maybe off the end of the bat, but Cunningham scores a second run of the inning for Perez's 15th RBI. So watch a location, and Perez getting the job done. And you can kind of go back to petite sacrifice fly that allowed Cunningham to tag up at second and move to third. Base is empty, a one run lead, and here's Shane Robinson. Drove in a run with a single his first time up. At the knee, strike one. The Angels getting a lead off single, follow up double, and getting both runners around to score. Bad swing by Robinson, 0 and 2. Cap to short. Union. Mauer, and that ends the inning. A couple of hits start the inning. Both runners score. It's 4 3, and Robbie Grossman will lead off the fifth for the Twins. Here in Southern California, Twins in front four to three as we go to the fifth. And Robbie Grossman, who walked and scored in the third, will lead off the fifth. Yeah, both starters throwing a lot of pitches. Weaver, 72 pitches in four innings. Now, Lasko, 81. Down and away, ball one. Strike. Grossman drawing his 20th walk. He has 18 strikeouts. He's the only regular player with more walks than strikeouts. Even for batters who struck out a lot back in the day, they would balance that out by saying, well, yeah, I walked a lot, though. Harmon struck out a lot, but he also walked a lot. Nowadays, that's not much of a concern anymore. Stroke to right. Grossman has a base hit and a walk in tonight's game. That was a high fastball. He kind of got that top hand on top of that ball and well, had some sink on it as it lands in front of Calhoun in right field. 
From our angle, looked like a high fastball. That ball stayed about letter high. And use that left hand good, get on top of that ball, get that base hit. Grossman came into the game with a 457 on base percentage. He doesn't have enough plate appearances to qualify for the league leadership, but to give you some idea, David Ortiz is leading the league in on base percentage at 423. That's how good Grossman's been. And here's Maurer, an RBI single. And he reached on a fielder's choice. Slow breaking ball on a strike. And Joe entered the game with a 388 on base percentage, sixth in the league behind names like Ortiz, Altuve, Trout, Bogarts, and Bradley. Strike two. Tracks brought to you by Carrier. You can see the location of strike one and strike two to Mauer. And Joe. Ooh, good take. <laughs> good take. We were trying to get him to swing at that curveball that was just over the plate. One and two. And Grossman dives back. Has not been a successful running combination with Grossman at first and Maurer at the plate. Grossman's been thrown out trying to steal twice. And now a base hit to right. And Grossman will fly around second on his way to third. A promising start to the fifth inning for the Twins with the first two batters reaching on base hits. That'll bring up Plouffe. Yeah, second time in a ball game. Joe has pulled the ball into right field between first and second. He did it in his first at bat. Waited back nicely. Pitch outer plate. And Joe turning on it. And the speed of Grossman not stopping. So runners at the corners. Nobody out. The Twins would like to get the two back, two runs back or more that the Angels got in the bottom of the fourth. Ploof clobbered a three-run home run into the bullpen his last time up. The only hit in the three-run inning. Tap towards short. The run will score. And Ploof hits into a double play. Grossman comes in and the Twins get one of those two runs back and the leads back to two. Yeah, ninth double play that Weaver's been able to get behind him. And I guess that's the best thing with runners at the corners you could get as a pitcher. Get two quick outs, but you do give up a run. Grossman scores for the second time. No RBI for Trevor Plouffe. Base is empty for Dozier. A ground ball to short and a pop up to the center fielder Robinson. Slow breaking ball, strike one. Off the plate with the same pitch. Now if you miss it at the beginning, Weaver making his ninth career start here against the Twins. 7 0 with a 2.72 ERA coming into this ballgame. Weaver spins another one up there, up and in. Twins have not beaten Jarrett Weaver here at Angel Stadium yet. And Dozier with another curveball, and he beats it foul. Very good numbers here at the ballpark for Jarrett Weaver. 76 and 32. Drilled to the corner and a fair ball. Dozier rounds first on his way to second. And where would Weaver be without that first pitch ground ball double play? Here comes Byung Ho Park. 
Well, Brian finally kept one fair, and it's a double, his 12th double of the year. The Twins get their seventh hit of the ball game. The third this inning. Breaking ball stayed inside, and Brian. He throw five he, straight curves. Yeah, it does so well. Opens up, and ball rattles around the corner. Cunningham has to get it back in. Pitches up to Park. Park drew a walk his most recent time up went down swinging in the second. And now two and oh. No activity yet in the Angel bullpen but Weaver having a tough time here in the fifth inning. So far just one run scored but three hits. Got a dangerous pitch here to Park. It also has first base open. 70 miles per hour. Two and one. Snuck a fastball by on the upper part of the strike zone to even account. Two and two. And a ground ball right over the second base bag. And he shifted Giavatella is able to make the play. Three hits, a run for the Twins, and they lead 5-3. Pepsi fans of the game enjoying the score so far. We're about halfway done here. Twins up 5 3. Ricky Nolasco drops a curve over to the leadoff man for the Angels in the fifth and their leadoff batter, Yunel Escobar. One strike. Tapper left side. Nunez picks it up, uses that one wow. hop throw. Davey Concepcion was the first shortstop I remember who used that regularly, and that was an artificial turf. But we routinely see Nunez do that here or at Target Field on a natural surface. Yeah, I mean, look at his play. He almost gets blocked out by Ploof right there, but stays with it. And then it's where he throws that ball. I mean, he'll throw it maybe four, five, six feet in on that grass. And you can see the ball like a one hop skip to Joe Maurer. Now, that's a tougher play if you throw it like two feet in front of Joe Maurer. Right. That's going to be a tough play, but 
He's got that down. He, something that you work on in uh, batting practice and early infield. Calhoun takes a strike. Calhoun's had a couple futile at bats against Alaska, striking out looking in the first, swinging in the third. Pulled foul, two strikes. Calhoun in his fifth season with the Angels. 26 home runs last year for the Angels. Played his college ball out of Arizona State, signing by the Angels in 2010. Missed down and in. You see the pitch count right there at 86, and that's just, this is an area where I wish that they'd go to 120 pitches rather than 86. I mean, 100. Called third strike. Yeah. Calhoun has struck out all three times against Nalaska. Strikeout number four for Nalaska. Hitting Calhoun for the second time on a called third strike. There's plenty of the plate. And now Trout. I say that 100 pitch count, 120 pitch count over the 100 only because we're in Alaska's at right now. You know, he's looking, set what, 89 pitches, 88 pitches now. There's 120, you know, you get out of this real quick. Maybe you get two more innings out of him. I understand but, what you're saying, but you realize that will never happen. No, I'm just thinking more <laughs> of the mental part than the physical right. part. I'm not saying they're going to throw 120 pitches, but if you're throwing, if you're this pitch number 90, all right, now Ricky Alasco is going to go back in the bench. Hopefully it's a quick out and look up at the scoreboard, which it's all around. I have 90 pitches. I have one more inning. It's the mental part than the physical part. That's all I'm saying. One and two. And now two and two. Alaska's been pitching with the lead pretty much all night long. Two and two to Trout. Fouled away. Yeah, they all had a long Trout and Alaska had a long battle in the third inning. Alaska finally got Trout to fly out to center. On the ground. Nunez on the fly throws Trout out. Alasco rebounds after kind of a rough fourth inning with a 1 2 3 fifth. Second 1 2 3 inning for Nolasco.
Leading 5-3, to three. twin fans, don't forget a twin home games. You're bringing your Circle Me signs. And if you get circled, you may find yourself on the Minnesota Lottery Winner Circle where you could win $100 worth of lottery scratch-off tickets courtesy of the Minnesota Lottery. <laughs> Max Kepler will lead off the six, and he takes down an in-ball one. Kepler's 0 for 2 against Jared Weaver, and it'll be Suzuki and Buxton. Talking with Kepler a little bit today. If you've talked with him at all, and fans will get a chance to hear more from him, I'm sure, in the coming months and years. I mean, you he might be the last guy you would think grew up in Germany. Eduardo Escobar has more of a German brogue than Max Kepler does. <laughs> oh boy. And Kepler grew up in a, he, as he just told me today, a trilingual family. Learning German, of course, English, but also some Polish. One down. Yeah, his mother was American and the father is actually from Poland. Both parents, of course, uh, ballet dancers in the uh, in Germany, the Berlin Ballet. Kurt Suzuki will bat. He's one for two. Had a wild game on the south side of Chicago. James Shields gave up six runs in the first two innings. And that was an improvement over his first start with the White Sox. And it was seven to nothing at one point. Now it's nine nine bottom of the ninth. Tigers have come back to tie it up. Or excuse me the White Sox have come back to tie it up. After the Tigers had an early seven nothing lead. Suzuki swings and misses 0 and 2. Yeah these two guys right here Suzuki and Weaver they have faced each other a lot now 54 times. Of course, Suzuki, a lot of years with the Oakland A's, Weaver here in Anaheim. And Suzuki with 16 hits, a home run against Weaver. Picked up a hit earlier in the ballgame in his first at bat. Tap foul. Other American League Central action Kansas City beat Cleveland two to one. And the race tightens up a little bit. Kansas City now two games back. Looked like the Tigers were going to be two games back, but that game now with the White Sox going into the 10th inning. Kansas City's had kind of an up and down season as far as wins and losses. So they lost. A lot of injuries. Yeah. Alex Gordon out, Mike Mustakas out. Both out because of one play. They collided with one another. Salvador Perez has been hurt. And Drew Butera stepped in and done a pretty good yeah. job. Tapper to short. Petit has it. Two down. And that will bring up Buxton. Carsoup.com trivia <laughs> question. Which Angels pitcher has the most career wins against the Twins? I like your guess. Mr. Chuck, Finley. Chuck Finley. And it is Nolan, Nolan Ryan. Ryan. Well, we mentioned wins. his name. Here's Buxton. Breaking ball taken for a strike. Well, Nolan Ryan with 18, Chuck Finley with 17. My goodness, what's the difference? How about Frank Tanana? 13 times and Weaver with nine. Popped up, it'll reach the seeds two strikes. Yeah, I mentioned, you know, Weaver kind of doing what Frank Tanana had to do at his at the end of his career. I remember it was a a duo of, you know, Dodgers had Koufax and Drysdale for many years. Here at Anaheim, it was Nolan Ryan and Frank Tanana. Boy, were they a, a one-two punch. And like Koufax and Drysdale, one a right-hander, one a left-hander. Right. And you know, of course, uh, Frank Tanana had a great career here. Ended up going to Detroit and ended up hurting his left arm, a left-handed pitcher, and he became kind of a oh, Jarrett Weaver, and that's what Weaver's kind of doing, going from a pitcher, pitcher. Buxton drives it deep to the left field corner, and it's Can gone. It a home run. Off the top of the wall by the foul pole, and Buxton hits his first of the year. Well, good. He got that over with right there. 
Right down that 347 mark down that left field line. Ball looked like it just cleared the wall. And Buxton, congratulations to him. Yesterday it was Max Kepler that picked up his first major league home run. And here Byron Buxton, a breaking ball, stayed up. Hits it right down the line. And popped it up. I'm sorry, not his first major league home run. His third major league home run, his first year. He hit two last year. And a strike to Nunez. Shame on me. But it's still a home run his first this year. Yes, it is. Now, Nunez lifts it high and deep to center, but playable for Robinson. And that ends the inning. Byron Buxton hit one off the top of the wall for a home run. And the lead is back to three. Fox Sports North is presented by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com at your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. What's yours? Twins in front 6-3, their second three-run lead. Earlier, earlier they had a four-to-one lead, and now Pujols. Giavatella and Cunningham will bat. Yeah, a couple fly ball outs off of an Alaska. Pujols 0 for 2. Now a ground ball scooped by Plouffe. Plenty of time to throw one away. And now seven in a row sent down by Nolasco after the Cunningham double. Twins fans if you can't catch the games on TV you can stream them live on your mobile device with the all new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app take Fox Sports North and Twins Baseball with you wherever you go. Now granted the Angels have had all sorts of injuries so some of this is understandable but my goodness you look at their lineup right now and the irony is Alaska's handled the first four batters just fine it's the guys behind them that have given them the most trouble but you look at Escobar a veteran Calhoun a productive player in years past then Trout I mean Calhoun's going to be a better hitter because of Trout hitting behind him Trout will the ball lashed to right center field. Giavatella has a three hit ball game. It'll go to the wall and it'll be a double for Giavatella. And to make the point I was trying to make nonsensical completely, he's got three hits, but there's a huge drop off behind Pools. Why would you pitch to Pools when light hitting Johnny Giavatella is hitting behind well, him? A high fastball right there. His third hit, as you mentioned. This is first at bats against Ricky in Alaska, so. He's had success against them. But Ricky's left some pitches up like that. That's a one out double for Giovatella. That's his 12th double of the year. Cunningham has reached on a fielder's choice and doubled, scored twice. 
I mean, they're so little protection for Pujols in the lineup, and they're right. waiting for him to start hitting 280 instead of 230. And unless or until they get somebody lined up behind him who's a serious threat, might be waiting a long time. Twins bullpen showing some signs of activity now with Velasco approaching 100 pitches. 107 are the most pitches he's thrown in a ball game. Scooped by Suzuki. Twins bullpen in decent shape. They had a 10 inning game yesterday and they were run. Uh, out there the bullpen was throughout the homestand but they've got four pitchers that did not pitch yesterday available to them out of the bullpen. Yeah Pat Dean did a good job of getting into the seventh inning. One and oh. And now missing two and oh. Buddy Boshears and Taylor Rogers from the left side are pitchers who did not pitch yesterday. Yeah, Ryan no. Presley is warming up and then Neil Ramirez was added to the team today. And Alaska fell falling behind on Cunningham again three and three and oh. One out. Petit is on deck. And a four pitch walk fills first base. And for Alaska, his wow. first walk of the ball game. Yeah, brings out Eric Rasmussen, the interim pitching coach. But this is where, if you had that pitch count of 100 and you come into the ball game like Alaska did 93, you empty the tank. You stay aggressive. But, you know, the high fastball to Giovatella, and right there, first walk of the game, but you run yourself into trouble. That's what's happening in Alaska right here. The team will bat. He represents the tying run. Alaska's got maybe more ground ball outs today than normal. And if he can get a ground ball hit at somebody, he can get out of this mess. The team with a single. He was involved in that collision with Trevor Plouffe, was awarded third base in a rundown. And he drove in a run with a fly ball on the fourth. Played ball one. You empty the tank with your good fastball, keep it down, maybe get a ground ball. But two straight breaking balls. And six straight out of the strike zone. This is the pitch you have to control fastball away. Suzuki sat away. And look where that ball came running back in, and Petit had a strong swing. Watch Suzuki, the catcher, move again. Outer half, hit that fastball spot. And he, he throws a breaking ball and misses. Three and one. Carlos Perez on deck. Situations like this, you're not trying to trick anybody. You need There's to make them hit ball. the ball. Flip to Dozier, relay to first, double play. There you and go. Alaska gets through the sixth. It's a 6 3 Twins lead as we head to the seventh.
the game. Well, Joe Maurer driving in Nunez in the first inning, made it a one nothing ball game. Angels came back in the bottom of the second and tied it at two apiece. And then Trevor Plew, oh, the rundown right there. That didn't really create a run, but it was just ugly. But Trevor Plouf redeemed himself with a three-run home run in the third inning, giving the Twins a 4-1 to one lead. Angels came back with two in the bottom of the fourth. And Twins added one in the fifth, in the sixth. And, and Ricky Nolasco finally listened to me and threw that sinker <laughs> down and got the double play ball. So it's the second double play grounder yep. behind Nolasco this year. Well, I mean, watch this right. He falls behind on Petit. Trust your fastball, little sink, Petit hits it sharply to Proof. Ploof, Ploof did a good job charging it and turned the double play. Robbie Grossman will lead things off against Al Albuquerque. Just called up today, and there's a decent chance while he's out there he might throw a slider. <laughs> Albuquerque's career mainly with the Detroit Tigers. He does have a fastball, but he does like that slider. One and one. Mauer and Plouf will follow. Albuquerque's been up and down for the last couple of years. The Angels called him and former twin A.J. Octor up. Three and one. Grossman. Again, he's been an on base machine for the Twins. And time call. I think it's afforded Twins fans and the front office the luxury of trying to project Grossman. A high fly to center. And Robinson going back. And that ball is gone! A home run! Like Buxton, that ball hit the top of the fence and bounced out. Yeah, Grossman with his fifth home run of the year makes it a 7-3 ball game. Third home run yep. tonight for the Twins, and two of them have just barely gone <laughs> over the wall. So Grossman with his home run, good fastball down, uppercut swing, taking it straight away center. And Shane Robinson goes back and it lands in the trees out in center field. Here's Maurer. Strike one. Started to say about Grossman, who can play all three outfield positions. And the Twins still project forward, an outfield of hopefully Rosario in left, Buxton in center, Kepler in right. And that's under the assumption. That Sano would be moved back to the infield or DH. You can see it clear. Yeah. Yeah. Buxton's ball in the left field corner looked like it hit the very top of the wall. Twins will take it. Two strikes to Maurer. Foul back. So Twins can project forward with Grossman already showing the ability of playing all three outfield positions if things break elsewhere. And I mean you've got a pretty nice four man outfield there right now productive uh, offensively if Grossman is uh, the fourth outfielder he can play all three positions snap bat backpedaling Petit can't handle it and Maurer will reach Yeah, it should be an error on Petit but that ball had a lot of spin on it Joe kind of jammed himself on that. And Petit had two cheek who looked like he could have come in and maybe tried to shoestring the, the catch, but he decides to wait back. See the ball getting into the kitchen, and you saw the spin into that ball. And Petit kind of looked at the ground right there, like, what did it hit? Well, the rotation of that ball got away from him. So, second air of the ball game for the Angels. And now Plouffe takes strike one. Petit makes his second error of the year. Ploof with a no doubt home run while a couple have scraped the back of the wall almost. Ploof clobbered his deep into the bullpen and left with two men aboard. A driven foul. 0 and 2.
two strikes. And now one and two. Poof came up with runners at first and third. Nobody out in the fifth. Hit into a double play. A run scored. But of course he doesn't get credit for a run batted in. Down and away, and now it's two and two. Albuquerque, 29 years old, from the Dominican Republic. Originally signed by the Cubs, came up to the big leagues with the Tigers in 2011. Five seasons, became a free agent. Dribbler in front of the plate. And Plouffe is retired on the play. Mauer goes to second. And bring up Brian Dozier. Twins fans, the 2016 Insurance MLB All-Star Game ballot is here. You can head to twinsbaseball.com to choose your hashtag ASG Worthy Stars. Send them to the MLB All-Star Game presented by MasterCard July 12th down the road of peace in San Diego. Vote today, vote tomorrow, vote at twinsbaseball.com slash vote. Last time the All-Star Game was in San Diego, I actually went to it. That was when? 1992. Okay. And uh, the Twins finished the first half in Baltimore. And uh, of course, Tom Kelly was a manager, and there were what, seven or eight other uniform personnel. I think Wayne Terwilliger went. Ron Gardenhire was asked to be a coach, and Gardy backed it off and wanted Wayne Terwilliger to have the honor of coaching in the All Star game. Whole bunch of players. Of course, Kirby Puckett. I think Brian Harper was on the crew, and we flew coast to coast from Baltimore to San Diego. And had a great time. 2 and 0. Oh. And who won? National League win? Who? Do you remember at all? <laughs> 1992. Well, let's see. Who had the home field advantage in the World Series that year? Oh, that's right. They didn't do that back then. No, they did not. Yeah. Pretty sure the American League won. I think that was a, in the middle of a pretty good run for the best league in the world. <coughs> Ball four. Dozier takes a walk. That'll bring up Park. Albuquerque last year had a good year for the Tigers. 67 relief appearances, a 4.21 ERA, a little bit high. You don't look that much at the ERA because of two or three bad outings sometimes as a reliever, but four and one out of the bullpen. 58 strikeouts in 62 innings, but signed with the Angels and then started in the minor leagues, just getting called up. And he delivers outside a ball. Park with a strikeout, ground out, and walk so far tonight. One and one. Grounder towards the hole, fumbled by Petit. And everybody's safe. He'll be charged with his second error of the inning. And the bases are loaded now for Kepler. Came in at a ball game. He's known as a defensive type player. Makes his second error of the inning and his third on the season. He came in with only one. Park pulling this ball. Petit going to his right. The ball came up on him. And by the time he could get that ball over to Pujols. Park crosses first base, so base is loaded with one out. Kepler up 0 for 3. And a chance to officially blow this game wide open. Strike on the outside corner. Kepler said he, uh, he likes the outdoors. He likes to go fishing. He hasn't really done any hunting, but he does like fishing. Asked him what kind of fish. He would catch in Germany and bass, trout, no walleye or northerns, chopped up the line foul. Two strikes to Kepler with one down. Old 
foul off the screen in front of the Twins dugout. As you may try to go fishing Monday. The Twins have an off day when we get home a week from today. May try to hit the first of uh, his uh, Minnesota Lakes. Chopper to third. And they'll get oh. one, and that's it. And a run will score. Nobody occupying third base. And again, that's on the shortstop. Escobar came over to get the ground ball, and Petit's got to fill in behind him and cover third base. Well, maybe Brian Dozier learned a little bit, but uh, Bogarts did <laughs> because he kept running. Kepler will get a run batted in on a fielder's choice. Well, the out at second. And Brian Dozier. Stopped and, and that made uh, the third baseman Escobar get the force out at second and Kepler picking up an RBI. His sixth of the year. And first and third twins still aren't done. Suzuki at the plate one for three. Driven to right field. Cole Calhoun won't be able to make the play. Suzuki with an RBI single. Coming in from third is Dozier. Not all Albuquerque's fault, of course. He's had to get five outs here. He's only got four. Well, you take advantage of the miscues by the other team, and the Twins have been able to do that this inning. Suzuki picking up his second hit. Kind of an inside out swing in front of Calhoun. Picks up an RBI, his 16th of the year. And the Twins are opening it up with a 9 to 3 lead. Charles Nagy, the pitching coach for Mike Sosha, out to talk to his right hander. Buxton will be the eighth man to bat here in the seventh inning. Nagy runs back to the dugout. Buxton with a liner to short, a fly ball to center, and then he hit a line drive that looked like it landed right on top of the short wall by the left field foul pole. His first home run of the year. Up and away, ball one. Kepler's at third, Suzuki's at first, two away. Swing and a miss. One and one. And the former twin A.J. Octor up in the bullpen for the Angels. Swing and a miss. Buxman, of course, would like to get into a routine of simply putting the ball in play. He hasn't struck out yet. He had two strikes. In his second inning at bat before lining out to the shortstop. Well, he'll probably get a slider here. That's what I'm <laughs> guessing. One and two. Oh, and fastball. Puts it in play. And Petit makes the play. And that ends the inning. Inning started with a Robbie Grossman home run. The Twins added two more runs and now lead nine to three.
coverage of baseball Max Scherzer with another good outing against the Chicago Cubs Ian Kinsler hit James Shields second pitch for a home run Shields gave up six more runs after that and Jay Bruce you associate him with home runs at least I do but he leads the major leagues now in triples with six. Well Ricky Nolasco's afternoon is done he's got a chance to get his third win of the year with that six run lead. The bullpen coming in Ryan Presley will be the first one out of that bullpen making his 32nd relief appearance. Perez Robinson and Escobar do up. And a first pitch strike. Twins have the opportunity perhaps tap back to the mound easy play for Presley the opportunity perhaps to just have a nice orderly game the starter went six and if the rest of the relievers can do one inning apiece that always works well I bet you the percentage of a team winning when you have full innings pitched by everybody is almost 90 yeah, percent you know it's been a long time Dick since we've had a game like this yeah. but you can relax a little bit but you don't take anything for granted. Ryan Presley hopefully can have an easy hit inning here in the seventh. Carlos Silva was the master at that. Six innings. And then one guy get the seventh, one guy get the eighth, one guy get the ninth, and the Twins will win ball games. Strike at the knees. Shane Robinson with an RBI single his first time up. And you know why? Because a reliever doesn't come into a tough situation. Right. You come out, throw your eight warm up pitches. And you get to face the first batter with no runners on. Well, now Presley was warming up last inning. Swinging a foul. He's warming up last inning. The score at the time was six to three. And I don't know that Ricky Nolasco had more than Petit that he was going to pitch to. In other words, if Petit had reached instead of hitting into a double play, Paul Molitor might have made the move. And now you've got the tying run at the plate, and it changes everything for the incoming reliever. That's why that double play was such a big play to end. The bottom of the sixth inning popped up out of play. Still two strikes. Oh, and two. And Robinson strikes out on the breaking ball. Yeah, good hard breaking ball right there by Presley, and that's what he can do. He can get some strikeouts. Fox Sports supports the Grand Slam Dinner, benefiting boys and girls clubs of the Twin Cities Sunday, August 14th at Capitol Grill in downtown Minneapolis. You can join your hosts, Brian and Renee Dozier, for a four course meal served by your favorite Minnesota Twins players. Visit FoxSportsNorth.com. Click on upcoming events for details. Yeah, for Presley, that's 35 strikeouts now in five, 35 and a third innings pitch. So averaging a strikeout per inning. And Presley, in part because he can let it fly here with a comfortable lead, 97 miles per hour, but up and in to Escobar. At the knees at 98. Yeah, good fastball straight over the top, and he kept it down in the strike zone. Talked about it in the Boston series. It's not just the games that Presley has pitched, but the times he's had to warm up and not come in. Had one of those games on Friday. Hack to the right side. Dozier has it. Over to Mauer and a quick one, two, three inning for Ryan Presley.
called up today. He was with the Angels obviously before. This is his eighth outing. Yeah, this is actually his fourth stint this season with the Angels, just making his eighth relief appearance. Octor up and down a couple times, a couple years for the Twins. In the two years, for 2014 and last year, Octor appeared in a total of 18 relief appearances. He has a major league win. Just had a high ERA at 5.18. 2 0 to Nunez. Nunez pretty much scored a run all by himself in the first inning. Popped up. It's down the left field line and a long run for Cunningham. He gets there, one away. Nunez singled, stole second, was balked to third, and then scored on Maurer's ground ball single. Well, this copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. After Nunez scored the first run of the game, it's pretty much been the Robbie Grossman show afterwards. A walk. A run scored in the third, a single, and a run scored in the fifth. Then he homered to center field, leading off the seventh. So to the left, and Cunningham trots in. Two quick outs here in the top of the eighth. And that'll bring up Maurer. Yeah, Joe's been on base all four times via RBI single in the first, then a couple errors, and then they singled in the fifth. Scored two runs. Cody Boshears looks like he'll get the eighth inning. At some point, the Twins want to get their newest relief pitcher, Neil Ramirez, into the game. But Ramirez, who was just picked up on waivers from the Brewers, hasn't pitched in a game since June 5th. One strike to Maurer. And foul back to the screen, two strikes. There's Ramirez. He started the season in the Cubs bullpen and then claimed off waivers by the Brewers. And the Twins claimed them off waivers from the Brewers. Tap to the right side, Giavatella makes the play. Or has a good inning. Angel infield hadn't been exactly sharp tonight, but they make plays. At least made one in the eighth inning, and it's a one, two, three inning.
manager should be happy and in good spirits after the game with the Twins can pin this win down. Six innings for the starter Ryan Presley with a quick seventh nothing too strenuous that would keep him out of tomorrow's game if the Twins need him and now the eighth inning will go to Buddy Boshears. Yeah Boshears making his eighth relief appearance for two thirds innings so far since being called up from Triple A four hits allowed a couple walks one intentional with eight strikeouts. Yeah he's gotten 14 outs and eight of them have been by a strikeout. He'll face Calhoun Trout and Pujols here in the eighth inning. Big outing here for Bo Shears, who originally signed by the Angels back in 2008. He actually pitched for the Angels in 2013. Out of the bullpen, 25 ball games, no record. He had 13 strikeouts in 15 and a third innings with the Angels. Swing and a miss, one and one. Calhoun happy that Melasco's out of the game. But now he's got to face a guy that's been pretty tough against lefties and the exposure that we've had of him. Yeah, we've seen the fastball. He attacks the strike zone and then the good curveball, type slider, hard breaking ball, and occasional changeup. Checked his swing, two and one. Calhoun, uh, Calhoun struck out. Three times against Nolasco, twice looking, once swinging. And a strike, it's two and two. Left handers just one for nine against Bull Shears. And he has struck out five of the nine batters he's faced. Hit the left and going back with Grossman. One away. We've talked about brochures before. You know, I mean, here's a guy that was released by the Rockies and played independent ball, and now he's wearing a major league uniform again. Good for him. Played in the independent Atlantic lead with Somerset, July 1st, University of North Dakota night at Target Field, and a limited number of UND theme night ticket packages are available. That include a game ticket and green and white twins cap. Learn more at twinsbaseball.com slash UND or call 833 twins. One down on the eighth, here's Mike Trout. Fastball on the outside corner. These two were teammates, of course, with the Angels. And before that, Cedar Rapids. Shears had a so-so year, low A ball that year in 2010. Now he's challenged him with two fastballs. Now Suzuki sitting inside. High and deep to center. Buxton back. And he makes the catch up against the wall, threw away. Well, there's that little bit of angle straightaway center where right field and center field meet, and Buxton went right into that corner and made the catch. So Trout gave it a ride, but it's just a long out, second out of the inning. Two down, and now Pujols. Three straight fastballs. I think Boshears wanted that ball in a little bit. Buxton caught it right against the fence. Strike on the outside corner. I think the Twins are at right now where we were for the most part of last season. Regarding the outfield defense, I think this is a good defensive outfield. The way it's constantly or cons <laughs> currently constituted, There's a tapper to short. And Nunez flings it across. Boshears couldn't have had an easier one, two, three, eight inning.
been a good night for the Twins. Nine to three, they've got the lead. They've hit three home runs. They have not played uh, uh, from behind at all in the game tonight. Trevor Plouffe contributed with a three-run home run back in the third inning. A one for four night. One and zero oh from AJ Octor. And now two and zero. Oh. Tomorrow it'll be Irvin Santana for the Twins, Julie Chassin for the Angels. And up and away 3 0. Oh. Angels made a couple of changes. Ryan is in at short, Crone's in at first. Marte in left field as Cunningham moves to right field. So Calhoun out, Pujols out. Four pitch walk to Trevor Plouffe. And Petit out. So a leadoff walk here in the ninth, and that'll bring up Dozier. Ryan one for three, a double and a walk in his last two plate appearances. And the twelfth inning now in Chicago in a game that started two hours before this game. Again, the Tigers had an early 7 0 lead. White Sox came back to tie it. It's 9 9 in the 12th. Swing and a miss by Dozier. And Neil Ramirez is warming up. Looks like he'll get a chance to finish the ball game for the Twins. And pitch for the first time in more than a week. One on one. Off the plate now two and one. Doctors thrown seven pitches this inning and only one strike. Poorly away. Octor originally signed by the Twins. He was a 46th round draft pick by the Twins in 2010 out of Michigan State. Strike called three and two. Those are his numbers with the Twins. Combined between 2014 and 15. You can see a really good opponent batting average, 265. That's strike three, a high fastball, and Dozier's gone on strikes. One down, and that'll bring up Park. Park is 0 for 3 with a walk. He has put the ball in play twice. Doesn't hit anything hard. And the average down to 209. Ball one. He just looks unsure at the plate. We've seen a lot of kind of half swings, check swings. Foul away. And when there's been contact, it hasn't been solid contact. Foul balls and two hoppers to the infield, pop ups. Probably unrealistic to expect the adjustment. To be smooth and steady. And there was some great optimism in May when he was hitting home runs. There's a strike one and two. And we see him give up on that ball a couple of times. He's a guy that stands pretty much on top of the plate. And I think the scouting report, you, should, you can see where he stands on the plate. Pitch him hard in, breaking stuff away. That fastball missing away. The 
think everyone certainly hoped, maybe even thought that based on what we saw in May, things would be better in June and then better in July, and there you go. But it's not turned out that way. Taking low, three and two. 19 walks for Park. He has struck out 67 times. Kepler on deck. Another swing and a miss. And another strikeout. Two down. That looked like the slider right there. Something down and away. And Park strikes out for the second time in a ball game. And Octor picking up back to back strikeouts. Yep, breaking ball. Kepler is 0 for 4. Strikeout, pop up, a ground ball, reached on a fielder's choice. Got credit for a run batted in in the seventh. Swing and a foul. One strike. It's hit to left. And retreating is Marte. And he makes the catch. And the Twins are done on the ninth. They lead it nine to three. They've got a lead in the series opener. And Paul Molitor got six innings from his starter. He can manage the bullpen for one of the few times this year and get through the game, he hopes, with a comfortable win for one of the few times this year. And the new guy gets a chance to pitch an inning. Yeah, Neil Ramirez coming in, 27 years old. He was once the number one pick by the Texas Rangers back in 2007 out of Kepsville High School in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Traded over to the Cubs this year. Spent three seasons up and down with the Cubs. This year, between the Cubs and the Brewers, in 10 relief appearances, nine and a third innings, eight walks, 13 strikeouts. And he'll try to find a way to get Johnny Giavatella out. Giavatella was three for three against Nolasco. And so Ramirez. Obviously a non-save situation, but he'll pitch to Giavatella, Cunningham, and then Ryan, I presume, would hit in petite, what was Petit's spot. Yeah, for Ramirez, this is his 80th Major League game, all out of the bullpen. Four wins, three losses. Very good, 2.42 ERA, 67 innings, 81 strikeouts, but 31 walks. So that has been an issue, the control. Throws a strike to Giavatella. Grossman with his back to the infield, tracking it. And it 
is gone. A home run for Giavatella. His fourth hit of the night. And Ramirez's introduction to the Twins is an opponent's home run. Now that fastball came running in right into the swing of Giavatella hitting his third home run of the year. Suzuki wanted it away. You see the location. Giavatella opening up and just hitting it over the fence in left field. And now Cunningham, one for two with a walk. He doubled and scored in the fourth. And a first pitch strike. Remember the Twins brought up uh, J.T. Chagua, and he really struggled. He was optioned back to put Rodriguez in that bullpen in his major league debut. But for Ramirez, he's been on that mound before, the big mound. Hard That's a pitch there. since uh, June 5th at Philadelphia. Gave up a couple of home runs in two thirds of an inning in that game. Marte is in the on deck circle. He'll hit next. And the count is one and one to Cunningham. Popped up. And in short left, Grossman with the call and the catch one away. Spent most of his big league career here with the Angels. He'll pitch against them tomorrow. Our Century Link, what's next? Herman Santana looking for his. Second win of the year. And Julius Chassin will be his mound opponent. One down on the ninth. And now Marte will bat. Marte in his first season with the Angels, last year with the Tigers. Strike. Oh, and one to Marte, and now he asks for time. Now Marte getting traded over from the Tigers back in January. Couple stents with the Angels this year. Swing and a miss on two. Threw it over the top type breaking ball right there by Ramirez. Started the year with seven relief pitchers, 12 man pitching staff. They, of course, had to expand to 13. From the left side, only Fernando Abad was with the Twins on opening day. And from the right side, only Presley, Tonkin, and Jepson were with the club. Kinsler's a brand new player to the big league club. Mm -hmm. Ramirez now, both Shears and Rogers from the left side. Half foul. Still one and two. Chuck Walk came and went. Ryan O'Rourke was with the Twins for a while. Perkins, of course, on the disabled list. J.R. Graham was out there, That's too. That's true. Yeah. yeah, there's another one. One and two to Marte. Pop foul, backing out of play. Casey Fiend now pitching right. for the Dodgers. The yeah, Twins have gone through a lot of different arms already. Jose Barrios came up, made a right. few starts. He's yeah. back in the minor leagues. Yeah, Tommy Malone back down yeah. there. They'll 
Hughes, Trevor May on the disabled list. Swing and a miss. Yeah, good breaking ball there. Ramirez gets a strikeout yeah. and out number two. Good hard slider right there. Picks up his first strikeout as a Minnesota twin. So got ahead in the count. Threw a breaking ball down. Tried to fastball that Marte fouled off. And then struck him out with that hard slider. Focus so much on the pitcher, of course, but kind of an important inning for Suzuki, who's catching this guy for the first time. Gets a chance to see how sharp the breaking ball is, what life there is to the fastball at the knees at 92, strike one. Good fastball there. Back two strikes. And the three Twins wins against the Angels in Minnesota were all very close ball games. Total margin of victory for the Twins in the three wins, four runs, and now they've got a five run lead. Checked his swing. One and two. Yeah, Twins have not won a ball game. By more than five runs. And they had a chance with that nine to three lead, but last time they won a ball game was in Seattle when they beat the Mariners seven to two. By a five run margin. Well, it's really in evidence even at home. The Twins haven't played well at home by any stretch. Twelve wins at home, five of them have been walk off wins. Mm -hmm. And then there was the six inning win against Milwaukee. So run of the mill routine. Relaxing wins I haven't had too many. <laughs> haven't had them. No. Fouled back. And Buxton with a home run. Grossman with a home run. Angels have not played well by any means. Committing errors costly errors. The twins to their credit took advantage of them. Two and two. And the Twins got a chance to beat Jarrett Weaver for the first time here. Well, Ramirez trying to wrap things up here. Now he's about to throw his 18th pitch. Popped up right side. Mauer down the line. With the catch. A and convincing the win. <laughs> and the Twins are 4 0 against the Angels. And a convincing win for the Twins. And Ricky Nolasco and Trevor Plouffe both come home and enjoy the night. Yeah, Trevor Plouffe, big three run home run in the third inning. And then the Twins added on five more runs. So nice victory for the Twins. In all four home runs hit in tonight's game, three by the Twins. Seven Twins pitcher strikeouts and a total of $54,600 was raised for prostate cancer research. To make a donation, you can go online to homerunchallenge.org. Tom Hanneman, a short road trip out here, just three games, but it sure got off on the right foot with a nice win for the Twins. 